Space needs marketing. How every space organization, whether they're universities, whether they're businesses, whether they're anybody involved with space at all, needs to have some way to promote themselves and advertise themselves and just get the word out about how exciting and fun space is. <laughs> we need more cats in spacesuits. Very important thing. Why? Because cats in spacesuits are cool. Because cats rule the interwebs. Everybody knows that. And if cats in spacesuits, people say, wow. Cats are cool. Space must be cool because cats get attention, <laughs> right? And you know that's what you want to do when doing space projects. You want to get attention. Everybody wants to get attention to promote your project and the neat things you're doing. And so that's what marketing is all about. Marketing gets attention. You may not be selling something. Actually, you are selling something. You're selling an idea. You're selling a concept. But you want to package it in a way that gets people excited. Makes people want to come back for more and say, hey, this is great stuff, give me more of that stuff. So marketing offers a new reality, a new way of living at things. And so, you know, whether it's a new type of fruit juice or another type of candy or something like that, it's the way it's packaged or presented. You can't hear me? Right. Louder. Oh my god, I have to talk louder. When enough people believe it, it becomes reality. And so yes. with that. We have to get enough excitement and enthusiasm because basically the more people believe a thing, it becomes a real thing. Reality is now this new thing that we call reality, and that's where marketing comes in. One example is Warner Von Braun. Warner Von Braun, of course, uh, was famous for his presentations in the 1940s and 1950s about space and space travel. Got magazine articles written, wrote some books, and uh, he eventually got a hold of uh, this guy and did a couple uh, TV shows, which became extremely popular in the 1950s, uh, talking about man in space, man on the moon, man on Mars, stuff like that, showing the possibilities and working with real scientists to show that you know, they work, we can do this and start getting the army excited. Uh, another example here, some guy named Elon Musk. Now, what does he do for marketing? Well, um, on the next slide, I'll explain it. One day, yes. I can't believe I'm actually talking too fast for my own side show. Okay. So why was Elon Musk in Iron Man 2? I mean, I, I have no idea. They don't really look like each other. You know, he's not exactly a comic book hero, but for some reason, my next slide explains it, that you know, you know, you have a movie about a billionaire engineer in a movie about a billionaire engineer. So you have this this rich guy, intelligent, famous businessman in a movie about an Italian famous, rich, businessman, billionaire, engineer, okay, sorry. Um, basically, marketing makes him a rock star of industry. People start taking it more seriously. Instead of simply guys focusing on building this product and making this thing happen, and that's all fine and dandy, you also are out to the people. You're out communicating with you know, the media and newspapers and things like that. People who know nothing about space start to believe him and trust him because he's out there. His, his name is associated with space travel and building new things and private space travel and private ventures. And, and, and now he becomes like a role model, a spokesperson for that particular industry. And they believe him because they saw him in a movie. Right? That sounds silly, but you know, uh, Ronald Reagan and, and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and they became <laughs> governors for some reason. Why? I don't know. But someone heard of him before, and they became you know, big. So marketing is about perception. It's all about how you can shape the reality the way you want to and present your ideas in a manner that will get people's attention. And so how you do that? Well, I'm not a marketing guy. I'm still learning all this stuff. But this is just some examples of what you can do. You know, we need something called a reality distortion field. A reality distortion field is basically... You know, it could be a marketing, it could be a series of conferences, conventions like Space Up, for example, or some or, or inspirational speeches, uh, articles you write, newspapers, websites, social media, something like that, to make this thing of space being commonplace seem like it's happening right now. And uh, people like, well, this guy, that's what he does. He makes space travel look like it's happening right now, even though it really is not. But he's making private space travel fun and sexy and exciting. That's what he does. He's a showman. He's able to like hop up on stage. He's able to like jump out of airplanes. He's able to make things sexy and exciting and fun for everybody, even though you can't actually do it yet. But he gets you all riled up. He says, "Hey, this is gonna be really cool. Why don't you join me? Let's go do this." And we all go, "Yeah, let's do it." Soon. <laughs> and then, of course, you gotta take notes from the master. 
the man himself, Mr. Steve Jobs, who, if you haven't seen his presentation in 2007, when he introduced this device called the iPhone, please watch it. It is a, 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 a textbook case on how to do presentations, how to get people excited. The four 2007 smartphones, as we knew it, were a joke. You had all these little tiny buttons, and they're very hard to use. In one hour, he totally rebuilt the entire industry. I was going to show you a video, but I didn't have enough time. Another person, Peter Diamandis, that we all know, uh, has inspired, through inspiration and persistence, has created dozens of organizations, who are companies or nonprofits, getting people excited about the future, trying to make things happen, trying to build things to the next level. He inspired a whole generation of young people. It's not just himself, but he was spreading these ideas and his excitement to a whole larger group of people who could then excite, get, start creating new companies, new organizations, start inspiring another generation of people, or a broader collection of people uh, across you know, every demographic level that you can think of. And so now they're creating new space businesses. Some of you may be in this room here. You know, you're getting these ideas going. You're spreading the word. You're talking to the general public. Inspiration is a form of marketing. Inspiration helps people uh, think beyond themselves and, their petty, and, and whatever problems they have at that current time and think, wow, I could do this bigger thing, something that's greater than myself, something that might help the world, help other people. It could be really amazing. And I throw a few examples of, of how marketing can work. You know, building excitement via media, television, social media, toys, games, advertising, promotional. You know, People get excited. They, they watch their Twitter feed every five minutes and see what new exciting things going on favorite cat video and stuff like that. Um, if marketing is done right, people will want your ideas. They'll want to find out more and say, well, this is really neat, and I want to buy this thing, I want to buy that thing. Maybe it's just a toy, but it's the idea behind the toy that gets people really excited, and they want more. And maybe, just maybe, they'll buy a ticket for your spaceship. And uh, that's it.